Instagram on July 28th and I've dragged myself um, into consciousness and um, I'm getting beamed constantly <clears throat> constantly 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 getting beamed I've constantly 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 asked not to get beamed anymore and um, nobody's doing anything about it so far I'm still getting beamed um, I don't feel heart problems today but I've had heart beams to my heart so this is like this is an assassination and um, is looks like right now it's being connected conducted by Courtney Love or coordinated by Courtney Love and she has killed a lot of people I believe she got into this position probably because of things my parents have did um, she had direct contact with Chris I don't know that she's ever had any direct contact with me if she did I don't remember it um, I don't know that she <clears throat> had any, her family had any direct contact with my family, but it, it, she certainly, certainly were positioned in such a way it would have been easy for them to do in the 60s, especially. But not just the 60s. Um, so that somehow has put her in this position, okay, of being some kind of police type person, even though, um, you know, regardless of anything else, and um, I don't accept this system. I never have accepted this system. This system, this system has been forced on me. It's extrajudicial. It's not within. It's not operating within the law of the United States of America, and it's causing all kinds of damage, and it's putting my life in imminent danger, my daughter's life in imminent danger, and Chris's life in imminent danger, and it's allowed for us to be defamed, lied about, and all this other stuff. So I was trying to clean up some stuff on my desktop and I found this these lyrics to Nobody's Daughter which I had deleted but they're on this other file with this label this was from last night 200107 so it's um, it's a video of It's a video of drones, uh, drone cloud cover by drones, and my understanding is this is um, it looks when I went out to, to take a video of this, you know, it, there's all these indications from my perspective, you know, reading signs and things like that that Amazon money is behind this, so Amazon money is funding Courtney Love and. Like I said, Amazon, Jeff Bezos moved to Bellevue, which is where my grandparents lived. My grandparents that I now know, especially my grandmother, being deeply involved in this mind control system, being run through hospitals, like Swedish Hospital, where she worked in Seattle. She was retired by 1994, but my aunt was still working, I believe, my Aunt Marge. Um, and my aunt seems to have um, taken over and kind of probably been gone beyond where my grandmother went as far as the mind control because this mind control system has been working through generations on a generational level and people of my grandmother's generation don't seem to have been nearly as mind controlled as my mom's generation my aunt my mom and my aunt are the TV generation. My grandmother would, would have been young in the 30s and 40s before World War II. And there's a big difference between people who are post-war. From my perspective, it looks like there's a big difference in people who were born after World War II or who grew up after World War II and people that grew up before World War II as far as the degree of how their mind controlled they are. and. It probably is partly because of television, but it's the way television was programmed and the way the mind control system worked after World War II, which again is probably related to Operation Paperclip and Nazis and choices that the United States government made 
after World War II. So, <clears throat> what video is this? Let's match it. One of the things I've been wondering about is who is Samantha? I've been thinking really hard about it ever since this came out because, um, but of course more now, um, more now that I understand so much of this is related to people that I know or people around me. So it starts with, this video starts with a jet flyover. And then this cloud here, which from my perspective, linked with a dream that I had about an Amazon cone. So Amazon has already spent a whole bunch of money on surveilling me and um, actually doing assassination attempts on me. And they want to reward a bunch of people maybe if um, I'm killed. The funny thing about that is, I mean, not funny, but ironic is um, I still use Amazon. I can't, this Amazon is such a huge n company that does things that other companies can't or do nearly as well that I can't even personally boycott them, I don't feel like. So here's, yeah, so I show in this video the stream that I had, the cone, the blue cone and the blue line that I think matches that line in the sky. Then the flies, the people have been doing this for years, as I said, and maybe this is some type of thing relating to Alice in Chains or something, maybe it's probably older than that. The stream that I had, Courtney Love in a gown, wielding a leaf blower in the parking lot. And then I look at the different leaves and the things that are around in the parking lot. So that's all this is. It seems, I don't know. I don't get it. Um, I felt I felt that maybe Samantha was not just one person. Maybe Samantha was a group of people with a common purpose. But I don't know if that's true. And then Samantha is the name Samantha, for me, what that name brings up is Bewitched, the TV series, and the witch named Samantha, played by Elizabeth Montgomery. Elizabeth Montgomery looks a little like my mom looked in the 60s. Elizabeth, the character that she plays, Elizabeth Montgomery died. She, let's see, she was born the year of Chris's dad was born, 1933. She died in 1995 at age 62 of cancer. So she was another premature death, I think. Um, and it's hard not to wonder if maybe, you know, like uh, she was being taken out because she was an activist or something. Um, her character, Samantha Stevens, was mother to a daughter named Tabitha. And Tabitha on the show, I think, is relating to this blood generational situation and Toby Vale, whose name is Tabitha. And I think Toby Vale might have been named after some of the character Tabitha on this show. I suspect that might have happened. Because these folks, Courtney Love, Toby Vale, and even my mom seem to associate themselves with witches. And that's, that's a fact. 
And I don't think that that's trivial either because something about that I think allows people to um, feel like, you know, this idea of being a witch um, and using witchcraft to enact a desired um, result means people are willing to do all kinds of, it seems to be linked with all kinds of dirty tricks. It's not just linked with, you know, making potions and chanting spells. It's linked with all kinds of dirty tricks. Now, of course, the TV show made it seem like it's cute and just kind of hijinks occurred, but um, in reality, witchcraft isn't cute. Um, if Samantha Stevens is part of who Samantha is in this song, then it's the mother of Tabitha. Is But the mother in this situation is coded term, so um, is this to do with my mom or my aunt or both? And then the lines in the song that are significant, there's this line about the gutter from the girl. So gutter, cutter, those kinds of things. Gutter punk was an epithet that, you know, would have been gutter punk, like some punk rock person that's kind of um, lives on the streets. That was like an epithet from the 80s. And so I obviously I have intestines in my, um, I mean intestines, I have implants in my intestines, my digestive system, and um, those are linked to Mike Payne and people to whom Mike Payne is linked. One of those people is Courtney Love. And so burned me out might have to do it probably has to do with directed energy weapons um it also has to do with um setting literally setting fires this came out in 2010 so somebody semi-linked to us was killed in a fire in 2009 not somebody that i knew personally but somebody that was a partner of chris's friend This line about wrapping her legs around the world, both Courtney Love is a world traveler, and my daughter had become, since this song came out, my daughter has been sent around the world. My daughter literally sailed around the world a couple of years ago, um, and she went to school in New Zealand, which is interesting because that's what Courtney Love's family also is linked to New Zealand. She lived in New Zealand as a child, I think. In her mother did and her other family members villages of ether ether was a medical thing but you know it's what put, 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 put you to sleep so there's this constant insinuation that my daughter is going to be you know lulled into a sleep state and then harm is going to come to her in that state and then that mark lanigan video for where did you sleep the new one they're showing this girl and she's blonde, but I'm, you know, because of dream dreams and things, I understand that she's supposed to represent my daughter, but what she is kind of doing is, what it's kind of doing is showing me how I was when I was young and that my daughter's the same way. And my daughter is similar because I didn't know that these predators were surrounding us until 2013 is when it started to dawn on me. They were surrounded by predators, but even then I didn't know it was linked to my background. I thought it was all linked to Chris's background. Now, how would, I have to say, how would my mother have put up with me having to go through this? And clearly, she doesn't think about, um, she can't be thinking about me as a person with my own, with my own agency who deserved to live my own life according to my own terms. So 
my crucifixion, all this kind of stuff, isn't necessarily about her at all. It's about me. And that girl, you know, is not necessarily Samantha. It's about me. And these lines, I just don't know. I mean, it's like, I think, I think a big part of the problem here is that these people are all, including my mom, including Courtney Love, are all involved in murders. Now, I'm not sure why it's such a problem, because everybody seems to be pretty open about it. It seems like it's been something that's been going on for generations. Um, so I'm not sure why it's become this mechanism for to get them to attack me, but that's what it is. They they committed crimes, and this is what it's been ever since 2013. It's the people who committed the crimes who are coming after me the hardest, and it's not very surprising, but what does surprise and upset me is the fact that I haven't been protected from this. I mean, I've been protected kind of, but not enough, not nearly enough. And I haven't been protected from their libel and their lies. And they have obvious motive to lie. I, I don't have a motive to lie that I know of. They have a motive to lie because they've been involved in murders. Now, they've been involved in murders because they were set up. But that's sort of like the set part two. I think part one, you have to acknowledge these people have been involved in murders. And part two, what's the context? And is context, you know, how much does the context matter? I think the context matters a lot, but I think context matters a lot for everybody that's involved in crime. I don't think it matters so much that people should be considered, you know, allowed to continue to commit crimes and empowered, which is what's going on right now. They're still empowered. Beyond what an average person would be empowered. They have, they're operating with beyond average person's rights, well beyond. Not just the same rights that everybody's supposed to have, but more than those rights. And I'm operating with less than those rights. And that's another thing that is, I'm having a really hard time understanding how people justify that. So this bit about leave your money by the bed, I don't know. What's this about the money going around? So it's about her getting paid to do dirty deeds. Um, I throw it all away and I throw it in your face. And if you were on fire, I would just throw kerosene, which I think it might have to do with caro syrup or something. But I actually think that means care of scene. Because she could have wrote gasoline, but she wrote kerosene. Another possible reason why she wrote kerosene has to do with... Um, a girl I worked with had, was a burn victim. And because somebody had put kerosene on her hair as a child to kill head lice. And as a burn victim, she was treated through Shriners. And I think that she probably told lies about me. She was a bartender at this place where I worked at. Um, yeah, I hadn't thought about her in a while. So that person could even still to this day or have years later after I hadn't had any contact with her, she could have still been just spewing lies about me because all it takes is somebody having any contact with me at all for them to somehow have some sort of legitimacy as having something to say about me. But they're all, all these people are set up to specifically to tell lies about me. This whole thing is rigged from top to bottom. And I was kept in the dark up until... The only time, beginning of the time when anybody even tried to really help me understand was 2018, like after my cat was killed in 2018. So I was struggling between 2013, 14, 15, 16, 17, you know, more than four years I was struggling, being misled, being kept in the dark with no help whatsoever. And then come to find out you know, 2019, a year and a half later, oh, they're going to kill you. You took too long, but they heard they were telling me, you, you can't move, don't say anything, don't do anything, because that's going to wreck everything. You have to just, you know, sit back, and then we'll fix everything. That's what they were telling me before. 
and it was a lie. So this, the whole thing is just a massive crime. It's just a crime and that they're going to kill me at the end because they have some book from the Middle Ages that says they can do this. And they've got everybody brainwashed into thinking that what they're doing is legitimate and it's not. I hate so much. I love so much. I hate and I hate what you have seen in me. What it, what was seen in her? Probably that she'd be a tool to do certain things. I see this theme a lot of you know people who are in this trauma-based mind control system where um, they're so angry at things that have been done to them, and they want to get revenge. Um, Um, it's really hard for me to um, mentally put my head at where the, these folks are at because, first of all, I don't know the whole arrangement. It's very, it's a complex arrangement around this, this, this killing of different killings that they've had set up. So I think the Kurt Cobain situation was a premeditated, premeditated situation planned out not by Courtney but by other people controlling her. Same with Brett. Brett's situation was well planned in advance, there's, but there's different differences between them. For example, the people I think there were more people involved in what happened to Brett. I think everybody that was involved in what happened to Kurt was involved in what happened to Brett. But the in, group involved in what happened to Kurt is a smaller group. You know, involved in what happened and covering it up. <clears throat> so then we have these lines so you think that you could save him and we know that someone died oh an unkind unkindness of ravens and we know that Mary lied in in the video she's running to this place it looks sort of like a parking garage but it also looks like Erica Schlager's warehouse space in Minneapolis which I know she was familiar with um so what I think is that my mom set me up with Erica Schlager and my mom set um, Courtney up into her position. So my mom probably linked Courtney Love and Erica Schlager. And Erica Schlager might be part of who's being addressed in this. So you think that you could save him and we know that someone died, oh, in unkindness of ravens, and we know that Mary lied. And sometimes when she, pr she pronounces this, it sounds like we know that Mary lied, which I think she means we know that we've married a lie. Um, and there's a coordination of, of scripts and stories, and especially you can see this around the Seattle music scene. And... Um, really sophisticated misdirection going on with regards to this. So um, it's not just like casual, a casual thrown together lie. It's actually um, very professionally constructed. Um, another factor in all of this is, you know, I mentioned early on when I was figuring all this stuff out, which is um, Mud Honey and Mark Arm also linked to Bellevue and the Air Force and probably Operation Paperclip. So when she says you think that you could save him, I don't know him who him is. It could be a lot of different people and it probably is more than one person. Somebody that someone cares about that you're trying to protect. So it could be Chris, it could even, I don't know, I'm not going to speculate on, on exact people. but um, And we know that someone died. That could be, just like you think you could save him, that could be several people. But what she's doing is she's saying, you know, okay, Erica's going to figure, start figuring stuff out. She's, you know, that's kind of what she's, I think she's mimicking is me figuring stuff out. Um, we know someone died. Like, I'm trying to figure out the mystery. What's going on here? 
Oh, an unkindness of ravens, and we know that Mary lied. So an unkindness of ravens is parallel to a murder of crows. So it's unkindness versus murder. Um, ravens are one of the first animals that I noticed. I didn't know that they were implanted and being controlled. I just noticed raven behaviors in the early 90s. Um, and then ravens, you know, it's linked to Edgar Allan Poe and all that stuff. So we know that Mary lied. So now one of the things I figured out, I thought that I was, you know, and Courtney led this on herself in this aha moment I thought I had. This fax written by Kurt Cobain saying, who's this Mary Lou Lord character? I don't even know her. She's a you know pesky girl, so forth and so on. Um, so now I know that Courtney Love and Mary Lou Lord are essentially on the same side of this. And whether they actually have a real rivalry, I don't know. It could be totally theater. It could have been at the time that there was some type of rivalry having to do with control. It could have been that there never was a real rivalry. It could have been that the whole thing was theater from beginning to end. Um, I think there's a very good possibility. So we married a lie. Through villages of ether, my crucifixion comes. This is like, you know, um, lying to me and um, misleading me and me and my daughter, putting us to sleep, which they really tried. I mean, this was a huge effort, getting me to shut up. Huge effort. When I went to PCC, the whole school was involved in this effort, and I now realize that the whole school was being funded. I mean, the students and the teachers and, you know, everybody. Um, and what was being done to me at PCC um, was being funded and protected through Seattle. And when I say protected, it's because when I would finally, I thought, you know, this is crazy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna file a formal complaint with Title IX. Seattle made sure that, um, and it was through the Seattle office of Title IX. They made sure that they were all paid off and everything like that to. Um, to tank it, you know, to make it look like I had some sort of stupid trivial complaint. So, um, I, you know, the interesting thing about, uh, I don't want to get too far off on PCC, but that's what was going on. They were trying to shut me up, make me think that I could be safe as long as I did what they said, and then they're going to come through and stab me at the end, kill me anyway. I mean, I didn't even think that I, my life was on the line to begin with necessarily. I just thought, okay, I've been a crime victim, and they're trying to get away with it. Um, I didn't know that this, all this was going on. Then other things in this song, Your War Was a Lost Cause Before I Came. That's a link to the Lost Cause um, rewriting history of the South after the Civil War. The Pretty Things You Won't Get Back, I suspect, is a link to David Bowie's song, Oh You Pretty Things. And David Bowie just keeps popping in here again and again and again, and I'm not sure why, but he seems to have some kind of link with Erica Schlager. And he seemed, his song seemed to understand the mind control being linked to um, people like uh, Baron Von Braun, who, uh, you know, the person who was the champion of colonizing Mars back then.
Nobody's Daughter also talks about the same situation. The song Nobody's Daughter. I don't know who he is in the song. Made something better. He kept it for himself. If I had to guess, I'd guess it was Mike Payne, but I don't know. Um, so the irony is that um, Chris Newman is called No Man Nobody. And this is a mirror. She never was and never will be beef beholden to anyone she cannot kill. And so it's about Courtney. mostly I think but this is what she wants you know what the intent is for me that you know I would dig my own grave but it's you know I'm misbegotten because I would be misbegotten I think miss here is a play on the word on the state of Mississippi or the Mississippi River from Minnesota where it starts down to Mississippi New Orleans <laughs> more anesthes you know hospital references ether um, anesthesia horrors horrors i don't know who you is And it's all gone rotten. I, I, this word rot and rotten comes up a lot. Rot, R-O-T, rot, it's German for red. Um, but it might also link to this um, woman named Amanda Rotter, who was this Seattle scenester that would come to our shows when we played in Seattle. And she seemed to have some backroom links to of the music business. She's passed, passed away. Probably murdered. <laughs> 